It's a beautiful bacon day, Cookie Crusaders. Today we're going to talk about the three best topping sets I use on rye cookie. The first being the searing attacking toppings. As always, if you're going to have multiple shots hit against an enemy, you want to have high damage. So having searing is an option that works well. The thing is, the substats you have to focus on are usually going to be attack speed and damage resistance or attack speed and cooldown depending on how you're running the build. If you have a very specifically strong build that doesn't let back units get hit easily, damage resistance won't be too much of an issue. But if you need to have a lot of power, a lot of speed, a lot of activations, that's where the attack speed and the cooldown come in. Now, option number two is going to be your caramel toppings. This is a little bit different in the sense that Building attack substats is not going to be as optimal here as doing a couple other things. Now, as you can see, this is the best topping set I have right now, but what I'm working towards is the attack speed, the damage resistance, and trying to get the cooldown there, too. That way, you can have multiple activations, the speed goes super quickly, and then the damage resistance keeps the cookie alive. What happens with certain cookies, such as Rye, when you combine attack speed and cooldown, is that you almost get a pseudo extra cooldown boost because the animations play so fast that it's like you're bypassing the cooldown meter and so when done right if you can optimize the speed and optimize the overall output you can get some pretty crazy activations so think of it this way if I shoot off the 12 bolts from my cookie and they take two seconds to get to the enemy all 12 bolts that means that they've got two seconds to activate their skill before I've actually hit them with every single attack from Rai. Where if the animation is sped up, then maybe it only takes one and a half seconds or one second, depending on how fast the attack speed is. At that point, then the opponent enemy only has one second to actually react and protect themselves against the attack. So that's why getting it properly set up is a really strong way to do caramel toppings, but yet again, you have to have some really strong substats to make it work. And then option number three is going to be the critical toppings. In this instance, yet again, you're going to want to do critical as the main focus because you want to up that metric as high as you can to get that damage output as well as you can. Here, as you can see, we've got attack speed and cooldown as a good metric on this attack setup. And we want some damage resistance, but we don't have the ability to do that when we're focusing so heavily on attack speed and cooldown. So you can't really put this build into a team that runs anything that isn't really focused on keeping that cookie safe. So let's just take it into the world real quick. Let's go to Dark Mode World 8 and just show you the different instances of how each of them work and what you can roughly expect uh, when running them. So, we'll take this team here, we will use just Rye Cookie, and we will do the scroll, the clock, and the robes, and we're going to use the Searing to start. So we're going to run through and show you what happens when you're running the attack toppings. Mostly just watch the timer here because you can't do anything about the overall damage since the damage within the wave is always going to be the same no matter how fast you complete it. It will always be the exact same amount. And we can also judge whether we'll get through specific waves based on the different toppings since we're not using a healer. So that's something that we can use and measure to kind of give us a judgment of how we can do as well. So as you can see, we clear most of the stage pretty well on its own. A lot of attack power, a lot of ability to get through. Took about a minute to do so. We weren't able to finish completely. Now that was using the attack searing toppings. If we go through the exact same setup, but this time we use caramel toppings, we're going to see if we can get any further. Our animations should be faster, which should give us the ability to stay safer and also to deal damage at a much quicker pace, just like that. So, in most aspects, we shouldn't be getting hit too easily, depending on what we're hitting and what wave we're at. 
because the cooldown and the setup does matter for how we continue through each of these waves. So, as you can see, since we don't have cooldown on our toppings here, we're running into an issue of how long it takes for our cooldown to actually set up again. And that's why I think that's a big reason for you to get that set up if you can for the caramel toppings, because we got through, we did ample damage, we got to about the same exact point, but we didn't have enough cooldown to keep it going further. If we did, we might have actually had fast enough animations to not have ever even worried about getting hit in the earlier waves. Now we're going to go ahead with the critical toppings. We've got some good attack speed substats here. We've got some good cooldown. So we're not going to be too high and dry in every single instance. And we know we've got good damage, so we don't have to worry about our damage output either because of the critical shots as well. So let's see if we can make it any further than our two previous runs and if there's any big differences uh, between all the setups. So, specifically it does matter to how your team is set up because that's going to influence just how far you can get and it's going to influence how well your team and cookies run. As you can see there with the critical toppings, we got further than all the other waves. We had more damage output altogether and we survived the longest out of everything. But when we look at it again, when we go through the toppings, we had almost maxed out attack speed, halfway maxed out cooldown, and a pretty good critical substat. You can give up critical just to keep it at the base stats of 9% for each of them, and then just go damage resistance as your third subset. That is a good way to run it, and that's a way to keep it healthy and clean too. Um, or you can try to just double down on the three stats that you want the most. I'm still debating and still testing to see if having four stats focused on, three of them being the substats, one of them just being the maxed out stat of the topping itself, how that's going to work and how that will run but still pondering and looking over that to see if that's going to make a big enough difference. But both of these sets, even though the attack speed was high here, the cooldown still wasn't, and the damage wasn't high enough to ensure that we got through. And here, the cooldown, the cooldown was much higher here than it was here. That's what the main difference was there between those two toppings, very close to each other. Here, our speed was phenomenal. We barely got touched in the two earlier waves but we had no cooldown to supplement that, so we weren't able to keep up. So really having those three options would have been what pushed it further on and kept it keep going. Which topping set do you guys specifically think works best for Rye Cookie? How do you use Rye in the arena? And what teams do you usually run Rye with? Let me know in the comments, and thank you so much for stopping by.